If you want to ride faster, you must improve your VO2 max. And if you want to boost your VO2 max in the most efficient way possible, you'll need to follow the science to make sure that you're focusing on the right training in the right order, tailored just for you. My name is Damien Roos and I've coached hundreds of cyclists from world tour to weekend warriors. And in this video, I'll walk you through three science-based steps to ensure that you're getting the most out of every training session. No wasted effort, just effective personalized training that fits you perfectly. And here's the reality check. Not everyone responds to training the same way. This chart from a Ronestats study shows each athlete's individual change after the exact same intervention. Look at the one I've highlighted, a completely different response to the rest of the group. You might be that outlier. And since we're not measuring in a lab, the best thing we can do is measure the effort we put in and track our progress. Now, step one, and before diving into the specifics of the protocol, let's clarify why getting it right matters. The core aim of this interval training is to maximize the duration spent above 90% of your VO2 max. That's where significant physiological adaptation occur, the kind that boost your aerobic capacity dramatically. This principle was confirmed in the cycling specific study by Odin and colleagues in 2024. The study showed that cyclists spending more time above 90% of VO2 max during intervals experienced greater improvements in performance metrics such as VO2 max, maximal aerobic power and lactate threshold power. So what intervals are best? Enter Larson and Bouchette and their framework where they categorized intervals based on targeted adaptations, neuromuscular, anaerobic, or aerobic. When choosing your interval strategy, individual factors such as muscle fiber composition, personality, and personal preference become critical. Different interval structures cater to different athletes, and this goes for pacing intervals as well. Now, looking again at Larson and Bouchette's framework, type 4 intervals are particularly effective for aerobic gains. These are 4 by 4 minutes at 110 to 120% FTP, and these are what we'll run in this video. Ever felt unsure if you're truly hitting the right intensity during intervals, even with a power meter or a heart rate monitor? Here's the surprising truth. Relying on just one metric isn't enough. Crucially, no single measurements, whether it is power, heart rate, or perceived exertion, RPE, can accurately confirm optimal intensity alone. Instead, combine these three metrics, the holy trinity, to reliably gauge your effort. If your power feels barely sustainable, your heart rate approaches its maximum, and your perceived effort hits around 9 or 10, you're very likely near your maximal aerobic capacity. So let's dive into some practical examples from one of my athletes, illustrating precisely how to execute these intervals indoors and outdoors. Quick context here, I've got three files of the same workout, two are from one rider, and then the erg file is from a completely different rider. We're comparing them across the three different ones with the same workout. It's not perfect science, but it is useful to see what happens in real rides, and I'll be comparing relative markers only. What we are comparing initially is the equal to or above 90% of VO2 max, so the time spent there, as the goal of this session. Now, looking at, say, the three different ones, I did pull up WK05 and their modeled time spent above VO2 max of 90%. Outdoors, there's 15.15. Indoors, erg off. We have 15.11 at 90% or more. Indoors with erg on, 13.7 at 90% or more. So what does this say? It really says that self-pacing gives more time near the ceiling where outdoors adds a little more likely from cooling and natural variability. But let's look at the files here. So what I've got up here is this first one and it's a bit of a jumbled mess. So we can just look, if I click on power, this is erg indoors. So that smooth power across there is being controlled by the software. It's this flat power, which means you have great control but the heart rate you'll see is slower to rise from the start here. And we do see load go as they get higher and higher across. They're building the load across the actual intervals. In this erg mode, cadence is the lever. So cadence here is the lever, the only lever that you really have to work with. If cadence dips, the trainer chases the target and it gets really sticky. You, you know, have anyone's had that spiral of death with erg mode? you'll understand. And I do believe that this can cost time near VO2 max. If you want to do VO2 
to work in ERG, start hard for 20 to 30 seconds and then settle in. Now here we are with indoors, ERG off, so self-paced. And you can see the power across these is a little messier. You really sort of the same kind of thing. You want to open hard for 20 to 30 seconds and then let power drift when uh, you're holding the cadence. Cadence here, it drifts a lot, but you can see it, it did start hard for most of them and then kind of picked up on some of them, fell away on others. Heart rate hits 90 to 95% by about two minutes, and that's kind of the aim. It does take a little bit of time, but uh, getting up there, and you see these are much more consistent across each one because they are self-paced. The small surges in these, they really do help keep the engine hot. So the overall advice here really is, again, sort of hard start. Keep cadence high, add micro surges when you feel that the power is fading, because ultimately, like I tell all my athletes, it doesn't have to look pretty. But if we switch over to outdoors, it's the same idea here where you still want to do a bit of a hard start, no coasting, of course. And uh, this is really consistent and it's kind of hard start down and then back up again. So it is that kind of U shape. When you're outside, cooling is going to be better and cadence stalls are rarer because there isn't that control of the power. And that's why the totals are the highest here. If you're doing it outdoors, definitely pick a steady two to 5% climb or a headwind section, uh, stay seated and do the hard start for 20 to 30 seconds, hold high cadence, and then use short surges again to sort of stop any fade uh, and uh, keep pedaling in recoveries to keep it going. I just want to wrap up here though with some rules of thumb because I have shown you these three different workouts. And if your goal is maximum minutes at or above 90% of VO2 max, go self-paced with a hard start. So that is either outdoors or with erg mode off. If you need repeatable pacing, uh, then use the erg mode on but really you need to still add that overshoot with cadence and you still want to be cooling yourself effectively. If you want race feel and skills, then there's no other way to do it than going outside, finding a steady grade or a headwind and still having that hard start micro surges and no coasting. But you are judging success by minutes at or above 90% and how fast you reach them. If you reach them by minute two, then you are doing well. So pick the control mode that serves that goal. Experimentation will help you identify the best strategy matching your physiology, mindset, and training environment. Now that we've covered the interval protocol and how to execute it effectively, let's focus on measuring your progress. This step moves us from the specifics of each workout to understanding your broader development over time. First, during interval sessions, it's crucial to quantify how effectively you're targeting the key intensity zone above 90% of VO2 max. It's just that we can't measure this without fancy lab equipment. Using analytic tools like WK5 can model it, it's not that accurate, but I know that everybody doesn't have access to this software. So it's better if you're just tracking the big picture. So when we zoom out to assess longer term progress, again, tools like WKO can help here through modeling your VO2 max improvements across multiple training sessions. But the gold standard for verifying your training effectiveness is through performance testing. An all out five minute test before and after a training block provides a clear, scientifically supported method for assessing improvements in your maximal aerobic power. Remember though, that gains can diminish if not maintained. Ongoing strategic training is necessary to sustain your improvements over the long term. And if you want to know how to structure all of the intensities you need to ride faster, you should watch this video.